Good evening, folks at home and around the world, and welcome to another edition of the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper, and I strongly suggest that you have pen and paper by your side all during this episode of the Hour of the Time, for I'm going to be giving you a complete bibliography. You see, folks, I own a library that is better than most city libraries in this country, and I'm going to give you the names authors and publishing companies of the books that will start you off to bring you up to speed to where I am at. And you're just going to get what you need to get you to a beginning level tonight. I suggest, if you can, that you tape record this episode of the Hour of the Time so that you can play the tape back and refer to it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, folks, the first thing in the bibliography that need, you need to get started, I'm going to recommend to you, is a book. This is a thick book. The title of it is Our Ageless Constitution. Our Ageless Constitution. Now, I'm not going to say these things slow. I'm going to repeat everything twice, but I'm going to keep on going because I've got a lot of information to give you. Either make a uh, tape of this broadcast or order the tape, or if you can, write fast and get the information down, but get it because you need to read these books. You need them for your personal library. Uh, you need them to know what's going on in the world and who's bringing it about. Our Ageless Constitution, edited by W. David Stedman, S-T-E-D-M-A-N, and LaVon G. Lewis. It's part of the Stedman Liberty Library, published by W. David Stedman Associates. Now, I don't know where you can order this book from, folks. I got it as I always get my books from used bookstores, from people who find something and send it to me, from scrounging in thrift shops, from uh, new bookstores. Um, I have a library that's unbelievable. Most of you would be awed by the books that I have. Most of my income throughout the years has gone toward uh, stocking this library simply because I learned a long time ago that the sum total of all man's knowledge is contained in books, but you have to root it out. Not all books are true. Not all books tell the truth. Not all books are all lies. It's sort of a mixture, but you have to have the information available to do the research and come up with the answers. Okay, now once you've got that book, you have everything you need to know about the history, the ideals, the purpose, everything behind the founding of this country. And if you don't know that, you don't know anything about this country. So you need it. The next book that I'm going to recommend, because you need to know the symbology and the history and who these people really are, is a book that was originally printed in the 1700s. In fact, the beginning... Um, it's called the, um, the Templar's Chart, the Masonic Chart, the Templar Chart, and the beginning has a letter to the editors of the New York Express, and it's signed by Benjamin Franklin. Uh, it's a very old book. It has the complete history, according to Freemasonry, of Freemasonry. It's entitled, and this is the title of the book, The True Masonic Chart, or Hieroglyphic, Glyphic monitor containing all the emblems explained in the degrees of entered apprentice, fellow craft, master mason, mark master, pass master, most excellent master, royal ark, royal master, and select master. 
designed and duly arranged agreeably to the lectures by R. W. Jeremy L. Cross, G. L., to which are added illustrations, charges, songs, etc., with additions and emendations. Also, a complete history of Freemasonry by a brother. This copy that I have is the 12th and stereotype edition printed in New York, uh, published by A.S. Barnes and Company, 51 John Street, in 1854. You can find treasures like this if you look. Most people, though, sit back and say, oh, I don't know where to find that. I don't know anything about doing research. Uh, why don't you tell me? <laughs> That's not the way to do it, folks. Not the way to do it. The second book I'm going to recommend here that you get is a book by Joseph Campbell, probably the world's foremost authority on myth and mythology. This book is entitled Primitive Mythology, The Masks of God. Again, it's by Joseph Campbell, Primitive Mythology, The Masks of God. And I believe it's printed by Penquin, Penquin Books. Okay. Next one is also by Joseph Campbell, Occidental Mythology, The Masks of God. It's by Joseph Campbell, entitled Occidental Mythology, The Masks of God. Also published by Penquin, Penquin Books. Now, I've got all these books stacked up around here, so if you hear a moment of silence, it's because I'm reaching for something. Uh, I literally have surrounded myself with stacks of books. I'm going to give you the title, author, and uh, publisher of as many of, as I can, uh, starting with the most important for you to use to get started with and working on down. Next one is by Joseph Campbell again. The title is Creative Mythology, The Masks of God. Creative Mythology, The Masks of God, also by Joseph Campbell and published by Penguin Books. The next one, folks, is The Sacred and the Profane. The title is The Sacred and the Profane. The subtitle is The Nature of Religion, The Significance of Religious Myth, Symbolism, and Ritual Within Life and Culture. And it's by Mirsai... Iliade, Mirsai Iliade. It's actually translated from a foreign language. It's printed by Harcourt Brace Jovanovich. Harcourt Brace Jovanovich. Next one is an important book. Once you get to, once you get into the symbology of the mystery schools and the occult, you learn that geometry and hermetic science become very important. Now this book is entitled Occult Geometry and Hermetic Science of Motion and Number. Occult Geometry and Hermetic Science of Motion and Number. A combined edition by A.S. Riley. A.S. Riley. And this is uh, published by Divorce. Divorce Publications, that's spelled D-E-V, as in Victor, O-R-S-S. -S. And uh, there's some treasures in these books. Now, these are books that most people pass by. They look at them and say, oh, this is, this is boring, or I would never learn anything from that. And most people would never even pick up one of these books. But I'm telling you folks, you better start. Next one is entitled Celestial Symbols. Celestial Symbols. Symbolism in Doctrine, Religious Traditions, and Temple Architecture by Alan H. Barber. Alan H. Barber. And this is published by Horizon Publishers. Sometimes you get to understand that even the names of the publishers and sometimes the name of the authors are symbolic. Horizon, as you've already learned, means Horus rising. Horizon Publishers and Distributors Incorporated, P.O. Box 490, Bountiful, Utah. And that book contains some revelations. Another one is entitled... 
many moons, many moons. The myth and magic, fact and fantasy of our nearest heavenly body by Diana Bruton. Introduction by Colonel James Irwin of the Apollo 11 mission. <laughs> oh, yes. Gets very interesting. Very interesting. And this is published by Prentice Hall Press, New York, London, Toronto, Sydney, Tokyo, Singapore. So I know you can find this book. Now, we're going to get into some other areas now, and I'm going to attempt to sort of explain to you some of the things that are in these books. And you need to start with some history. The first book that I want to recommend to you is entitled Holy Blood, Holy Grail by Bajant Lincoln and uh, Lee. Bajant Lincoln and Lee. Holy Blood, Holy Grail. The next one is the Messianic Legacy. The Messianic Legacy by the same authors, by Jean, Lincoln, and Lee. And then there's another one called The Temple and the Lodge. The Temple and the Lodge by the same authors. And then the fourth one by these authors also is called the Dead Sea Scrolls Deception. The Dead Sea Scrolls Deception by the same authors. Now read those books. Read them in that order. The last one just came out. I've just ordered it myself, have not read it, but I know because I've read the other three that uh, I need to read it and it's going to be just as revealing as the first three. Now none of these books put together the whole picture. I've done that but they all have pieces to the puzzle that you need to find for yourself so that you'll know that I'm not leading you down the garden path. That's important. Now, in that series of books, folks, it outlines the history, as they have discovered it, of a secret society whose sole purpose is to protect the bloodline of the family which traditionally throughout history has claimed the divine right to rule the rest of us. It's important that you know about that family because the same people <laughs> also rule this country, folks. They're all related. If you haven't figured that out yet. And if you want to find out how related they are, start looking into an organization organized in Cincinnati called the Knights of the Golden Circle. The Knights of the Golden Circle. The next book that I want you to pick up and read is entitled Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar. A biography by Michael Grant. Now, in this book, it outlines the a lot of things about ancient Rome, their political machinery, the way that Rome was really ruled by families, which is going to be the same way in the New World Order, I can guarantee you that, and it talks a lot about the ancient religions in this book. It's very revealing. It's a biography, it's factual, it's not uh, fiction at all, and you need to read it. The next book is an extremely important book and puts a lot of pieces of the puzzle together. And the person who wrote this book didn't actually set out to even write about this subject. What he was doing was trying to research the peasants' revolt in England and ended up writing a book about Freemasonry because of what he found out in his investigation into the peasants' revolt uh, in England. And that man is John J. Robinson. John J. Robinson. The title of the book is Born in Blood, The Lost Secrets of Freemasonry. Born in Blood, The Lost Secrets of Freemasonry. I'm just going to read to you a little bit from the 
of the dust jacket here. Its mysterious symbols and rituals had been used in secret for centuries before Freemasonry re revealed itself in London in 1717. Once known, Freemasonry spread throughout the world and attracted kings, emperors, and statesmen to take its sacred oaths. It also attracted great revolutionaries such as George Washington and Sam Houston in America, Juarez in Mexico, Garibaldi in Italy, and Bolivar in South America. It was outlawed over the centuries by Hitler, Mussolini, and the Ayatollah Khomeini. But where had this powerful organization come from? What was it doing in those secret centuries before it rose from underground more than 270 years ago? And why was Freemasonry attacked with such intense hatred by the Roman Catholic Church? This amazing detective story answers these questions and proves that the Knights Templar in Britain, fleeing arrest and torture by Pope and King, formed a secret society of mutual protection that came to be called Freemasonry. Based upon years of meticulous research, this book solves the last remaining mysteries of the Masons, their secret words, symbols, and allegories, whose true meanings had been lost in antiquity with a richly drawn background of the bloody battles, the opportunistic kings and scheming popes, the tortures and religious persecution that were the Middle Ages. It is an important book that may require that we take a new look at the history of events leading to the Protestant Reformation, and you've already heard <laughs> about that on this show. But you need this book, Born in Blood, The Lost Secrets of Freemasonry. Get it. The next book is by the same author, John J. Robinson. After he wrote Born in Blood, he was intrigued, and so he wrote Born in Blood about Freemasonry. Then he had to go back and research the history of the Knights Templar, and he wrote this book entitled Dungeon, Fire, and Sword. Dungeon, Fire, and Sword. The Knights Templar in the Crusades by John J. Robinson, author of Born in Blood. And I'm going to read to you from this flyleaf, but, uh, yeah, I will. Over the past thousand years, the bloodiest game of King of the Hill has been for supremacy on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the site of the ancient Temple of Solomon. This book recounts the stirring saga of the Knights Templar who were called the Christian warrior monks who occupied the sacred mount in the aftermath of the butchery of the First Crusade, recruited to a life of poverty, chastity, and obedience intended to lead only to martyrdom on the battlefield. They were totally dedicated to the pious paradox that the wholesale slaughter of non-believers would earn the eternal gratitude of the Prince of Peace. The Templars amassed great wealth, which they used to finance their 200 years of war against Muslims on the desert, in the mountains, and up the broad sweep of the Nile Valley. The Templars' reward for those two centuries of military martyrdom was to be arrested by Pope and King, tortured by the Inquisition, and finally decreed out of existence. But their legend and legacy just would not die. In telling the incredible story of the Knights Templar, the author's clear explanation of the cultural and religious differences among the Templar's enemies and friends in the Middle East gives fresh understanding of the people who populate this restless region. Here are the Sunnis and the Shiites, the Kurds, the Armenians, the Arabs and Turks, who figure so prominently in today's headlines. The similarity of their antagonisms today and those of 800 years ago are often so striking as to be eerie. Dungeon, Fire, and Sword is a brilliant work of narrative history that can be read as an adventure story, a morality play, or a lesson in the politics of warfare. But, folks, be careful when you read these books that you do not believe them blindly, for sometimes the authors are taken in by the exoteric, but you still need to read them. Don't go away, folks. We've got to take our break. I'll be right back after this very short pause. Welcome back, folks. This is William Cooper for Swiss American Trading Corporation. Now, you've never heard me advertise any product or anyone or anything on this show unless I could solidly recommend it to you. I would use it myself, have checked it out, and know and believe that it is a good thing for all of us. And I'm not about to start now. How about a company, folks, that's been in business for over 11 years? How about a company that delivers non-confiscatable, non-reportable, hard assets directly to your door? They don't store them in a vault. 
so they can be ripped off like George Green just ripped off everybody who sent him money to buy hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of dollars worth of gold which he kept well he took the money and ran folks just like I always said he would but Swiss American Trading Corporation will not how about a company that writes a newsletter that openly deals with the imminent economic collapse how about a company who considers privacy and discretion an integral part of their relationship with their clients folks this is Swiss American Trading Corporation now if you call right now 1-800-289-2646 that's 1-800-289-2646 Four, six. I'll say it one more time. 1-800-289-2646. Right now. And state that you listen to the hour of the time. You listen to William Cooper. They'll send you their complimentary newsletter entitled Protecting Your Future. And the only obligation you have, folks, is to commit a quality hour into reading and considering the information in this newsletter. So call right now. 1-800-289-2646. And tell them William Cooper sent you. And now, folks, we continue with our bibliography. I hope you've all got pen and paper and you're writing just as fast as you can. Don't worry if you don't get them all. If you just get some of them and start reading, that's what counts. You can always order this tape and play it back and copy them down at your leisure. At some future date, we will print a bibliography, but right now, I'll tell you the truth, folks, we just don't have time to do that. We're so much engaged in producing this radio show and research, and I'm writing a second book and traveling and speaking and I'll tell you something right now I barely have time to talk to my wife and she doesn't appreciate that too much so <laughs> we're going away this weekend the next book the future of man the future of man once again the future of man by Robert Clark Graham Robert Clark Graham you can order this book for seven dollars from SC books P.O. Box 1562, that's P.O. Box 1562, Friendswood, Texas, Friendswood, Texas, 77546. Once again, $7 for this book from S.C. Books, P.O. Box 1562, Friendswood, Texas, 7756. Four, six. Well, I'm really going to have to hurry to get uh, a <laughs> substantial amount of these books in. I hear somebody out there screaming and pulling their hair out. I can't possibly read all these books. Yes, you can. I've done it. I've read every book in my library, folks, and my library is bigger than most city libraries. If I can do it, you can do it. The only thing that will stop you is because you don't want to do it. And if you learn how to do productive research, some of them you don't have to read the whole books, believe me. You just have to learn how to do that. But you have to understand what the context of the book is before you take anything out of context. You can get in big trouble doing that, believe me. Next book is A History of Mathematics. A History of Mathematics, second edition, by Carl B. Boyer. That's A History of Mathematics, second edition, by Carl B. Boyer, B-O-Y-E-R. And the foreword is by Isaac Asimov. And this is published by Wiley. W I L E Y should be able in fact you should find that in most good bookstores it should be on the shelf next one is the Dead Sea Scrolls be very careful about the Dead Sea Scrolls folks because everybody who's had their hands on them has been in the pay of the Rockefeller family and the people who are translating them now are in the pay of the Rockefeller family and they say that some of them have leaked out and that you're getting the the real version you don't know that this could have been intentional leaks and nobody None of us know how to really translate these things. So the Rockefellers basically are telling us what the Dead Sea Scrolls say, and I can just about tell you what they're going to tell us right off the bat, that Jesus didn't die uh, and all kinds of things. And, and uh, well, just wait and see. Just wait and see. This is called Understanding the Dead Sea Scrolls. Understanding the Dead Sea Scrolls. A reader from the Biblical Archaeological Review, edited by Herschel Shanks. Herschel Shanks, and this is published by Random House. Now, I'm going to go a little speedy here because I don't have much time left, folks, and I want you to get as many of these as you can. Next one is Pagans and Christians. Pagans 
and Christians. This book is worth its weight in gold if you want to understand the early history of the church and the antagonism between the early church, the early Christian church, and the pagan religions. Pagans and Christians by Robin Lane Fox. Robin Lane Fox, published by Knopf, K-N-O-P-F. Get it, read it, you won't regret it. <clears throat> the next one is, uh, that alarm you just heard go off is the bread maker. <laughs> the loaf of bread is done, and I'm fixing to have a hot slice of bread with fresh butter on it as soon as I finish this broadcast, folks. Preparing for the 21st Century. Preparing for the 21st Century by Paul Kennedy, published by Random House. Now, that's a modern book about modern things. You still need to read it. Next one is a very important book, printed in 1798. It has been reprinted by the Americanist Classics. The Americanist Classics, published by Western Islands, Boston, and Los Angeles. You can find this book easily. It's called Proofs of a Conspiracy by John Robison, A.M., 1798. Proofs of a Conspiracy by John Robison, A.M., 1798. The Americanist Classics, published by Western Islands, Boston, and Los Angeles. If you didn't get anything else I ever told you, get that book and read it. Another one that's very important is called Time Bomb. Time Bomb. We'll give you the roots of the Liberty Lobby in the spotlight and uh, America uh, Free Radio. And we'll open your eyes on the Nazi influence in this country. Time Bomb by Pillar, published by Arco. Arco. And this is... <laughs> Very revealing. Another one, uh, well, I don't have it in front of me, so I'm not going to risk misquoting it. Uh, this one is The New World Order. The New World Order, The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies. This is called The New World Order, The Ancient Plan of Secret Societies by William T. Still. William T. Still. And uh, who published this book? Let me see here. Huntington House Publishers. Published by Huntington House Publishers. Pick it up, read it. Remember, there's a lot of books called The New World Order. That's just one. I'm going to give you another one with the same title here in a few minutes. The next one is En Route to Global Occupation. En Route to Global Occupation. A high-ranking government liaison exposes the secret agenda for world unification by Gary H. Ka. Gary H. Ka. And this also is Huntington House Publishers. The next one is uh, pretty good, called Dark Majesty. Now, this author, Tex Mars, has published a plethora of books about the coming New World Order. Unfortunately, he really laces it with his own religious viewpoints, and that's okay because he's got a lot of hard facts in here, but it tends to turn some people off and they don't want to read the books because of that. If you're a Christian, you will have no problem reading this book. If you're not, you may have some problem with the religious beliefs of Tex Mars, but if you can struggle with that and get through it, uh, it will open your eyes and you will get a lot of good facts from this book. It's called Dark Majesty by Tex Mars, The Secret Brotherhood and the Magic of a Thousand Points of Light. You see, he understands this uh, quite a bit like I do, only I don't try to foist my religion off on the rest of you. I'm a Christian. But I'm a different kind of Christian. I'm a Christian only in that I believe in the Ten Commandments as given to Moses by God and in the actual words attributed to Christ. Whether he lived or died or was the Son of God or was just a man walking on this earth, uh, I believe that what he said is the most profound utterances ever spoken on this earth, whether they were ever spoken or not folks, and I try to live my life by the Ten Commandments and by those words that Christ uh, is credited with having spoken. The next word is Satanic Voices, Ancient and Modern. Satanic Voices, Ancient and Modern. Compiled by David Musa Pidcock. David Musa Pidcock. Now, <laughs> This author is the head of the Islamic Party in Great Britain. 
So again, you have his fundamental religious beliefs mixed in this book with a lot of cold, hard facts, which I have checked and double-checked and are absolutely true. So if you, again, like the other book, if you can get past the religious viewpoint of the author and look at what the history of this thing is from his viewpoint and the facts that he delivers in this book, then, uh, <laughs> believe me, you'll be way ahead of the game. Uh, it's published by Mustaqim, which I believe is the Islamic Party in Great Britain, and uh, Mustaqim publishes Islamic art and literature. Now remember what I told you a long time ago. If you don't want to read opposing viewpoints or books written by people who believe in different religious or different gods than you do, if you don't want to uh, read something that was written by a blatant communist, uh, then I'm telling you right now, you're going to be whipped in this war. You're going to be beat down and enslaved in this war because you won't know anything about your enemy. You won't really know what the truth is because you'll be stuck, held prisoner in the dogma of your own beliefs. And I mean that, folks. A lot of us have been believing a lot of things for all of our lives that are absolute, total lies. And once you start your own research, you're going to find that out. And you're going to be probably as angry as I have been at times in my life. And you may do some stupid things like I have done at times in my life, which is one reason why none of you should ever, ever put me up on a pedestal, because I'm just like you. <laughs> I'm just like you. I'm not any different. And I, and I may be a lot more human than most because I've gotten in touch with something inside that lets me feel and express my anger and my emotions and things that most people aren't in touch with. So when I'm angry, I scream and yell. But five minutes later, it's all over with. <laughs> don't put me on a pedestal. I'll fall off immediately, and you will all be disappointed. So if you don't do it, nobody will be disappointed. The next book is called The Unseen Hand. The Unseen Hand, An Introduction to the Conspiratorial View of History by A. Ralph Epperson, my good friend, who lives in Tucson, who's going to be a guest on this program here in about a week or two, and we're going to try to do uh, maybe three or four episodes of The Hour of the Time with A. Ralph Epperson. This book, The Unseen Hand, is, is uh, an incredible piece of work, and I highly recommend it. The next book is also by A. Ralph Epperson, and I've used this book extensively during our revelation of the mystery schools and mystery Babylon um, in our series, our ongoing series. It's called The New World Order. The New World Order by A. Ralph Epperson. Get these books. Read them. If you can't find them, just wait. He'll be on this show pretty soon, and uh, we'll give you a phone number and an address and a price, and you can send off and get them directly from him. This next book is extremely revealing. In fact, anything that this author has ever written, you should read. In fact, there's a center, uh, a study center set up in Los Angeles called the Philosophical Society, which was founded by Manley P. Hall. That's the name of the author, Manley P. Hall, 33rd degree Freemason. Anything that he's ever written, get it and read it. This particular book is called Freemasonry of the Ancient Egyptians. Freemasonry of the Ancient Egyptians. Another good one to read that he wrote is The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. And anything else that you can find that's been written by Manly P. Hall, get it and read it. Make sure you understand the symbology. Don't get caught up in the exoteric bullshit because that's the way they hide the real meaning. Another one because a lot of the mystery tradition is wrapped up in what they call the Kabbalah which is the, uh, the ancient uh, Jewish version of the mystery schools. And don't get me wrong, folks. Not all Jews are involved in this. Not all Catholics are involved in it. Not all Protestants are involved in it. Not all blacks, not all Arabs, not all whites. But some of every one of them are deeply involved in this. They are the people who worship Lucifer. If you worship Lucifer, you can be a member too. This book is called Judaica, Judaica, the Blackwell Dictionary of Judaica. This is the Blackwell Dictionary of Judaica by Dan Kahn and Sherbach. Dan Kahn and Sherbach, and it's published by Blackwell, Blackwell Reference. 
published or printed in Great Britain by TJ Press, Padstow Limited, Padstow Cornwall, but you can still order this from any bookstore. The Blackwell Dictionary of Judaica uh, by Dan Kahn and Sherbach. Make sure you get it because a lot of the Kabbalistic uh, words need definitions and you can find them in this book. Next one is a Dictionary of Freemasonry. A Dictionary of Freemasonry. A Compendium of Masonic History, Symbolism, Rituals, Literature, and Myth. A Dictionary of Freemasonry by Robert McCoy. Robert McCoy. This book is worth its weight in gold if you know how, again, to interpret the symbolism and get at the esoteric meaning instead of the exoteric writing. Some of you are al already know what I'm talking about. Some of you have no idea what I'm referring to, but you will find out once you get into this. Another book that's worth its weight in gold is called The Mystery Religions, The Mystery Religions and Christianity. The Mystery, Religions, and Christianity by Samuel Angus. Samuel Angus, published by University Books. Published by University Books. The Mystery, Religions, and Christianity by Samuel Angus. And we want to thank uh, our member, Spencer. Thank you very much. Spencer supplied us with this volume. Next one's been around for a long time, but again, is worth its weight in gold. But you have to understand, again, the symbolism to read these books. A lot of these books were not meant for us to read and understand. They're meant for an adept, an initiate, to understand. This is A History of Secret Societies, published by Citadel. A History of Secret Societies, published by Citadel, by Arkan Darul. Arkan Darul, D-A-R-A-U-L. Arkon, A-R-K-O-N, D-A-R-A-U-L. The Citadel Press, New York. A History of Secret Societies. Again, worth its weight in gold. The next one is The Occult Conspiracy. The Occult Conspiracy. Now, this book was written by someone who is in sympathy with the secret societies and may be a member, although I doubt from reading this. It doesn't sound like he is, but he is definitely in sympathy with them. So be careful when you read this that you don't get the wrong message. The Occult Conspiracy, Secret Societies, Their Influence and Power in World History by Michael Howard. That's Michael Howard, and this is published by Destiny Books, Rochester, Vermont, and the uh, logo of Destiny Books is the sun and the moon. <laughs> that should tell you something. Next one is America's Secret Assignment. Excuse me, I'm wrong. America's Assignment with Destiny. There's two books, and I had this confused with another one. The other one's called America's Secret Destiny. Throw that one out. That's total crap. <laughs> that is esoteric from the word go all the way to the end. This one, though, you need to read. America's Assignment with Destiny by Manley P. Hall and you will not believe what your eyes are telling you that your brain is reading. For this is an incredible book. It has incredible admissions, and you will begin to understand certain things that happen in history that you never could understand before. America's Assignment with Destiny by Manley P. Hall, and this is published by PRS, whatever that is. Let me look in here and find out so that you'll know. Philosophical, I should have known this. Oh, man, I feel stupid now. Illustrated, second printing, Philosophical Research Society, Incorporated. This is Manley P. Hall's organization. America's Assignment with Destiny by Manley P. Hall. Get it and read it. Another one that's extremely important that you read this book. Many people pass it by, snub their nose at it. Don't ever do that, folks. You're making a big mistake. This is the New Age Bible. The New Age Bible by Dr. John Rogers. The Hidden Truth Revealed. Just the symbology on the cover will send you reeling after you've listened to uh, the episodes of the Mystery Religion of Babylon that we've already revealed on this show. This is published by Inner Light Publications. Inner Light Publications. The New Age Bible by Dr. John Rogers. The Hidden Truth Revealed. Get it? And read it, folks. Another one you need to read, 
which will connect someone else with all of this, if you can understand the symbology again, is called The Mormon Murders. The Mormon Murders by Stephen Nypha and Gregory White Smith. A true story of greed, forgery, deceit, and death. Read this book. Good night, folks. I hope you get these books. I hope you start your own library, and I hope you wake up. God bless each and every single one of you.